hey guys welcome back to my channel so if you guys are here to learn to draw really well you are in the wrong place but if you're here to learn to knit this jumper i'm attempting to draw then i will definitely show you that after i draw it really really badly so i kind of like to have a visual of my patterns before I start them just so I can get an idea of any sort of designs that I need to keep in mind as I'm working it. Here I sort of drew like a striped version of it because I was thinking of using some leftover yarn I had to make up a stripey version but I didn't end up doing it and yeah. So to start off, I cast on using the long tail cast on. So in my head, I actually thought I was doing this a lot slower so you guys could see, but watching it now, I think it might be kind of fast. So I'll probably link you guys uh, in the description where you can learn to do this long tail cast on. So after you cast on the stitches that you need for your size, you work one by one rib in the round. And full disclaimer here, I actually thought I was going to do like a really neat color design here. So for the neck, I thought I'd do all these colors and um, make it look really, really good. But it ended up looking really like terrible, I think, anyway, in the end. So I did end up changing it later. So you'll see the neckline for a bit and then suddenly it'll change color halfway through the video. But that's because I like changed it and fixed it up. So you can see there, yeah, I added on this grey, I, I don't know, I don't know what was going on. I, I thought it looked okay, but it didn't. So now we are going to work our first round of the yoke and it's an increase round. And I'll show you guys how to do that increase. So for each size, there's a number of stitches that you work and then you work an increase. And I just did a make one right increase. And to do that, you pick up that stitch between your stitches from the back and then work that or knit that through the front loop. And then I've just continued that. And then here I'm just adding a um, stitch marker for my needles. And I'm just using some scrap yarn because I could not find stitch markers that are big enough for needles this size. But if you do, please let me know down in the comments below. So now this is going to be the German short rows. So for each size you have a certain amount of stitches you work up to. And then once you've reached those stitches, turn your work and now you've got the pearl stitches facing you. You can't really see, it's hard to tell, but you have the wrong side facing you. And then what you do is with your yarn in front, slip the stitch onto your right needle and then bring your yarn to the front because you're going to curl, to curl, not curl, you're going to pearl back. I'm just going to fast forward this so you guys can see because just work your pearl stitches. So you pearl to your stitch marker there and then from there you count the stitches that you need to work or that you need to pearl.
So then here you turn your work and then you're going to bring your yarn to the front and then slip that first stitch from your left needle onto your right needle. And then pull it and then you just keep knitting as normal. And then you work to the stitch marker, slip it, and then you continue working along to the next stitch to create your next short row. So you can see that's what the short row stitch looks like and so I'm going to knit into that one before it, turn my work and then slip that first stitch onto my right needle, pull And then bring my yarn to the front to purl back to the other way. So I'm just going to fast forward here so that you guys can see how to do the next short row. So you can see that stitch it looks like a double stitch, that's your short row stitch and then you want to work that stitch beforehand. And then turn your work. And then it's the same as before, you just bring the stitch from the left needle onto the right needle and then pull and then just continue knitting. So when you work back around, when you get to the two double stitches, you just work them like normal. And then you continue working around and then it's the same for um, the other side. So that's what it should sort of look like by now. And you can see that's the back and that's the front and the back looks a little longer and that's the red yarn that you can see where we did the short rows. Now your next step is to do your increase rows. You basically just knit the number of stitches you need and then work an increase. And I just did a make one increase for all of my increases. And I just continued that until the end of my round. So once you've worked all of your increase rounds, it should look something like this. So now um, we are going to separate for the sleeves. So I got my scrap yarn ready. You can use anything you want. If you have spare cables you want to put it on instead, you can. I just used scrap yarn because I had it. And then you just knit the amount of stitches across to your first sleeve. And 
and then transfer these stitches onto your waist yarn. And then from here to join your two body stitches together, I cast on stitches for the underarm. And then I just continue around to the next set of stitches that I would need to place onto some waist yarn. And then cast on again and then continue working your body stitches. And this is just to show you what it looks like once you've joined. So you can sort of see that's the hole where your sleeve or your arm will go. And then that's where your body's joined and it will continue down. So I just, I work the body down to the length that I want. So a lot of my patterns are customizable in length. I'll always include measurements within my pattern, but I personally like to try my pieces on just so I can see where I want it. I also have like a longer torso, so it's not an average size. So sometimes I have to make my pieces longer or shorter, depending if I want it to be cropped. So it's completely up to you. So once you've worked to the length that you want, I work the hem. So I actually didn't record it, but it's just a one by one rib, which is quite simple. And it'll be written out in the pattern. So to bind off the hem, I actually used a tubular bind off, which I'll have a link for in the pattern, but I'll also do it here if you guys wanna see how it looks when you work it on the hem. So to start off, I'm going to place the needle purlwise through that first stitch. And then I'm going to go through the back between two stitches and you want to pull your needle through that. I should probably say I do this quite slowly as well because I don't know if you guys can see on my computer I've actually got YouTube open because I was watching a video on how to do this as I was doing it and that link will be in the pattern but if you guys want to watch me do it here that's completely fine as well or you can choose to watch the link that I have in the pattern. And place your needle knitwise into that second stitch and pull through. Those stitches are essentially your setup stitches and the pattern starts now from here. So the pattern is to put the needle into that first stitch knitwise, like that.
and then place a needle purlwise through that second stitch. And then purlwise through the first stitch and then slip that stitch off the needle. And then you place your needle between two stitches from behind. And then put it through that second stitch knitwise. And then that's the pattern for it. So again, in a second. You place your needle in knitwise through that first stitch and slip it off. Then purlwise through that second stitch. And then purlwise through the first stitch and slip that stitch off. And then you place your needle between two stitches from behind. And then put it through that second stitch knitwise. So when you're at your last two stitches, you want to put your needle through knitwise on the first stitch and slip it off. And then you want to place it purlwise through the leg of the stitch already made. So not the one on the needle, the one next to it. And then purlwise through that last stitch on the needle. And then knitwise through the other leg of the stitch. And then that's it, and you finished your bind off. And that's how it should look like in the end. And it's quite a stretchy bind off as well. Now to pick up the sleeves, so with your bigger needles, you want to transfer your stitches onto your sleeves. And then you want to pick up the stitches for your underarm cast on there. So I like to pick up extra stitches along the sides as well in order to stop a hole from your underarm. I don't really have a fantastic method so I'm sort of doing something here but I wouldn't copy it honestly. It's just me trying to figure out how to <laughs> stop a hole from happening. There are a lot of videos out there that you can choose to look up instead if you want that um, will have a much more detailed version of it. So I'm going to fast forward this, but to you just pick up the same amount of stitches that's written down in the pattern and you just place your yarn on and then pick it up knitwise.
and then yeah you just keep working around and I like to measure my sleeve and once that's done you work your decreases at the cuff and it will be a knit two together decrease which I'll show you in a bit which is like that where you knit two stitches together After that you just work the ribbing, the one by one ribbing for your cuff. And then I just use the same tubular bind off that I used for the hem, which I won't show you here because I think I made a mistake. So I would highly recommend going back to the hem and just following that. And then at the end, it should look a little something like this. And you can take out those sleeve stitches. So that's it guys, yay! So thank you again so much for watching, I hope you liked it and if you do make this please tag me on Instagram. Um, yeah, so thanks again, bye!